It's the Queen's takeover here for changing the game. All female ass kickers giving lumps to you lames. Carolina boss lady giving orders cause she run it like a freaking assassin. You won't even see it coming. Got the Texas sports queen repping Houston for days. She's the voice of freaking reason. Keep you stupid at bay. And lastly, it's the Jester Delaware is a home. Talking crap to Jolie, your brains might get blown. And you know Kat and Kayla both a rep in the South. So you ever disrespect, you might get smacked in the mouth. Three women, one vision, podcast with a mission. Leaving haters so pissed, they be stumbling and tripping. Trust me when I tell you, you don't want that smoke. All female trio will make you lose that hope. It's time, so turn it up, let's get ready to go. It's the Queen's Takeover, ladies, start that show. OMG, that's all I had to say about money in the bank. Wow. From the crowd, the atmosphere, the matches, the surprises, and the results, it was like a banger from start to finish. These cats online who are saying it was like the worst PLE ever, I don't know what the fuck you were smoking when you were watching that. Oh, man, oh, man. All right. so. Kayla, overall thoughts about uh, Money in the Bank first before we get into the specifics. Shocking. Um, I agree. It was pro- honestly, in my opinion, I thought it was better than night two of WrestleMania. Okay. Um, I mean, I would honestly say it was better than AEW Double or Nothing. The um, only thing about it didn't really beat Double or Nothing is that returning open challenge, got the title, which, you know, I still like Double or Nothing because Duh. of that. Duh. Um, <laughs> I'm going to say it was even better than Forbidden Door. And a lot of people are probably like, hey, well, what do you, you know, no, it's not. Yeah, like you said, it had surprises, moments, oh my God, what the hell, you know, just throughout. And be truth be told, when is the last time you can actually say that we said, OMG, what the fuck, and what the hell, all in one, all in one time, you know? Amen. Amen. It was, I, rate it before we jump in the you know the results and stuff i rate it as a five star this is the best one we've seen in years and um above all i just i enjoyed it i really enjoyed it um all right so uh, cool all right jolie i know you had to catch up because you were working and everything but what you think it was great start to finish uh twists and turns and again to the stupid wankers that were saying that this sucked uh, go back to sucking Tony Khan's dick because that's all you guys care about. All right, so we're gonna kind of play off of um WWE's tweet as far as like going over the specifics and everything. Thanks to Kayla because she found the tweet. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, so Jolie Jester. Yes. It might be hard to pick. I don't know. Depending on your feelings, match of the night. Usos versus Roman and Solo. Okay. It had everything that we wanted in a match. It had storytelling. It had outside interference. It had the obligatory ref. And the end where the, the, they didn't show, but people are showing it on Twitter, of Roman going absolute ape shit outside of the ring. I love that, by the way. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. Every match was match of the night. Even Dom getting squashed was great. And to the assholes, I said, oh, he's going to lose. Ha ha. Fuck you. <laughs> you really think Cody? I mean, Cody is a great guy. Don't get me wrong. But there was no way in fucking hell. He's saying, yeah, I'm going to put over this pubescent. And and Rhea, Rhea, drop his ass. He's making you look like shit. And he's making you look weak. And you know what? I hope EO cashes in on you and takes the title away from you because you don't deserve to carry that title. If you're going to be a little mommy to that little boy. And I, as much as I hate them together, Jolie says break them up. I kind of want to keep them a little bit longer because I know it's going to happen again. And the acclaims things thrown at Buddy that he's getting caught by a kid named Dominic. I mean, that is... <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to hear a little bit more of the acclaim. So it's... You know, like I said, that's the kind of team that you didn't think will grow on you. But that day that they came out was just talking crap. And when they said that, mom goes, 
what did I say? I said, Hina said he got caught. I <laughs> oh my god! And then gosh. it came out that day that said, and what makes it even funnier because you kind of got storylines throughout the different companies because Buddy came out and says, or what was it? Um, Dominic comes out and says, "Well, you kissed my sister." So guess oh, what? Oh God, yeah. <laughs> you kissed my sister, so I'm gonna hook up with your woman. Yeah, we need a one day pass for sure. For sure. Okay, so Jolie says Civil War. Okay, so Kayla, before I ask you yours, this is one of the ass wives who thought it was like the worst p- pay-per-view ever. And it's like, and I'm even gonna call his ass out on it. It's like at easy E-A-Z-Y 11523. This has been the worst. PLE. Now they send Cena to talk. WWE has to try and one up AEW now. They want to do with WrestleMania in London. AEW living rent free in Vince's head. Yeah, I saw that tweet. Okay. Hold on. Oh shit. (laughs) WWE has been doing events in England longer than Tony has been a sperm in his dad's body. So for you to come out here to say that they live, that Tony lives rent free in Vince's head. Oh, sweetie, learn your fucking history. WWE wrestling in general is big over in the UK and in Europe. So yes, of course, they're going to sell out Wembley when AEW gets there. But I mean, it was technically all fucking scalpers and because I saw the resales. So, you know, we don't really know what's fucking true with that. And also, WWE knows how to keep secrets. I mean, weren't you the people saying, Oh my God, Drew's leaving. He's going to be all elite. He's going to show up in Wembley. How'd that work out for you, stupid motherfuckers? He took time off to take his citizenship test. You dumb cucks. (laughs) So for you to, you know, run your mouth and say that Tony lives rent free. I think you have that in reverse and we actually have proof that WWE lives rent free in AEW's head, especially Tony's. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is look up Tony Khan's rants or, you know, listen to Soraya actually say, yeah, Tony wanted me to badmouth it. Or, you know, hearing some of the guys saying, I really didn't want to say that shit, but, you know, I had to. So... Kindly take a seat because you don't know shit. And when WrestleMania does come to England, because, you know, I don't think they would have hinted at it if they're not planning it. And it does take time to plan an event like that because it is a huge deal. It is. Because if this does happen, you have to bring in so much more security. There's so much has to go through with this. And Lincoln Financial Field is going to find out next year in less than nine months so i'm gonna know all the processes i'm gonna know a lot more as an employee at that stadium what we're gonna have to go through so it it is a giant process lincoln financial field i know for a fact has been bidding over and over and over again to be the spot of wrestlemania we finally got it i think it also helps the fact that philadelphia was chosen to host world cup and now it's rumored that we're going to get the, the most likely possibly getting the championship matches at Lincoln Financial Field. I mean, what better place than the birthplace of America? Am I right? Yeah. Fair enough. So, you know, I, I do know that they were supposed to give us more matches, but I have we haven't heard more. It's just right now it's rumored. But so for you to say, well, they're just they're just trying to jockey. No, 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 sweetheart. They've been wanting these events over there for a while. I mean, I remember watching Insurrection, wasn't it? That I, I didn't didn't Edge cash in over in England on Cena? No, I don't think so. I know there was something over there where he attacked him. I just know that it's been a long time. My my brain is fried. Um, I was outside working for a little bit. I had to pick almost nineteen cucumbers today. Um. And it's we're finally getting the heat that Texas had. So it's not fun. No. When it hits, it hit like like we went from being like 78, 79 two days ago. Hey, here you go. Here's a 90 degree day with humidity. Oh, fuck. 
what we got coming up this whole week is nothing but like 95, 96, 97, and it's like Yeah, oh. so it's like my air conditioner is gonna be working overtime. Talk to me when y'all hit triple digits. We don't want that up here because that's gonna kill our crops. Yeah. <laughs> like we literally uh, just got rain. We've yeah. been in a drought. So well, we can send our rain. <laughs> <laughs> all right turn around it's raining <laughs> all right that's results kayla your match of the night was bloodline civil war i mean it had everything it had a well-deserved win for the usos um solo still looking confused as crap trying to figure out who he really wants to decide with paul Heyman shitting himself um roman getting angry roman getting happy roman getting cocky and then the fact that the pin was obviously done by Jay was making it even more better. So um, the storyline has been great through this. And the fact, you know, last night making it the main event, definitely the Bloodline Civil War was the match of the night. I mean, I would say every match was the night if I could. But if I honestly had to choose, I think it was definitely that one. And okay. And there is video of when Roman's getting pinned by Jay. He said, I loved you to Jay. Yeah, I love I you. Yep. Oh, I didn't see that one. Aw. Yeah, it was like he just mouthed it real quick, but you could tell what he said. So, Aw, see the family tingling and like everything. I'm, I'm a big oh. family girl. What? No, it's probably more like, I love you. I know you're pinning me. All right, when I get up, I'm going to beat your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll settle this at the family reunion. <laughs> oh, let's see. Oh. Civil War had a great ending and everything. Uh, my match of the night, or matches of the night, I should say, the money in the banks. And I can't, I say matches because I can't decide which one was better. Because it's like they were both like hard hitting, action packed. Well, of course, it's ladders, duh. But it was just like, one, it, it was just like nonstop start to finish. And my thing, <laughs> the funniest part was in the men's where it, it's like A, the crowd kept booing Logan Paul, and B, when all the guys were trying to beat the shit out of Logan Paul. <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, it's like the the money in the bank, the money in the bank ladder matches were fantastic last night, both of them. Oh, uh, but can y'all honestly say? I mean, I, I think we've kind of hinted at it already, but can y'all honestly say that there was not one bad match last night? I think that's what made it great. I mean, well, like Joey said, even Cody Smash and Dominate was even great, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. But here's a tester. Here's a real, here's a real, real question. Which crowd was hotter, London or Puerto Rico? Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico? Especially on that first woe, Puerto Rico beat them. Then after that, they picked up. But that first woe for Cody, Puerto Rico beat them. But then later on, it was kind of, it picked up. But I think Puerto Rico kind of outdid them a little bit. Okay. Okay. I think because with Puerto Rico, and I'm a little bit biased, um, well, number one, I work for Puerto Ricans, and I absolutely love and adore them. But two, the fact that it was hosted and starred bad bunny was just one of the uh most epic things about that now yeah. like if they had somebody british wise that came out to host this like i think that might have helped I mean, you didn't really need a host for this but like just somebody with with ties i mean like if like sheamus or i mean with drew coming back that was great but like Mm -hmm. Somebody famous to spice it up just a tad. But I did love the intro. I will love... I did like the, the Mission Impossible James yes. Bond intro. <laughs> that was actually kind of cool. And then they throw in the fucking amazing cinematography video for uh, SummerSlam. Oh, God, yes. That was absolutely epic. And for everybody saying that Becky went rogue last night, that was Banshee, an Irish ex-woman. You dumbasses. Oh, my God. All right. Kayla, 
There's a lot to choose from. The OMG moment. I actually got two. I couldn't really decide on either because um first of all, um first OMG moment I wrote down was J Penn and Roman. Because like I said, we didn't expect that coming. We always thought, hey, if Usos win, Solo's going to eat the pin, you know, whatever. So, and then the also, the other one I had was Shayna turning on Ronda. Was amazing. And it was just like, and I looked at mom and I said, well, if this, I said, I know she's a heel already, but if this is the complete heel turn, are we really getting the NXT Shayna Baszler that we've been seeing? So, and then I'm excited for it. And the fact that thing that came out that said, Ronda's fixing to leave WWE and she wanted a feud with Shayna. And since she basically just stated that she wants out quicker than they thought she wanted. So that's why they just kind of pulled the plug. So they had to go ahead and rush to heel because they were supposed to actually run with the tag titles. But since they didn't win it at WrestleMania and long story short, but Shayna yeah. turned on Ronda. And then the fact <laughs> that Marina Shafir tweeted out on Twitter, what the fuck? <laughs> and uh i didn't see anything from jessamine but it was funny that marina was like wait what are you doing why are you turning on her was um great so yeah jay Finn and roman and Shayna turning on ronda was too epic and then the fact that Liv is sitting there going oh my. and another thing it's funny it's it's very awesome history making moment for Liv. she won money in the bank last year cashed in on ronda rousey and became smackdown women's champion and then at Money in the Bank, she regains the tag titles. And guess what? Raquel pinned Ronda Rousey to get the titles back. So I thought that was kind of funny that Ronda was involved both <laughs> times for Liv gaining championship. Who got the pin? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I thought Liv got the pin. Mm-mm. She tagged Raquel in, I think. Or did she? Now you got me thinking now. Wait a minute. Okay. Yeah, cause yeah, cause it's like Raquel did a Tahana bomb and then tagged it live and then lived in oblivion. All right. Well, let's continue on while I find it because I couldn't remember who did. Okay, but they won the titles. That's all that matters. Exactly. Jolie. Um, I mean, it would be easy to say the the Shayna turn, which you know I've called for a long fucking time. Nobody saw sure this coming. Bitch, I've seen it for over a fucking year. I knew it was going to happen eventually. I just didn't know when it was going to. <laughs> I knew Rhonda was planning on leaving before next WrestleMania. I've known that she's only had a limited contract. I knew that, you know, if she was going to go out, she's going to go out on her own terms and feud with Shayna. This was the most opportune and perfect time to do it. With that being said, my OMG was um, from both men's and women's Money in the Bank. Okay. It was the Code Red from Zelina Vega to Zoe Stark on the ladder. That and was the fantastic. 450 splash from Ricochet. Okay. Um, those two uh, made me go, oh, holy shit, ow, ow, ow. And then the major OMG moment, which I'm surprised wasn't mentioned, Drew. Yeah, I was I was actually gonna get to that. <laughs> Him coming out, standing in that ring, <laughs> Gunther deciding to be a dick and slapping him in the face, getting okay. a you know a headbutt for his trouble, and then gets Claymore out of his boots. And that pop was amazing. It was. That was actually one of mine because it's like you saw the rumors online. Thank God they were rumors about like how Drew probably wouldn't be coming back contract wise shit and everything. But apparently it was a it was for other reasons. But after that, it's like you all you were always like up in the air as far as like who should actually dethrone Gunther. And although Clash at the Castle was a perfect opportunity for Seamus, after last night. I want it to be Drew. 
Now, whether it be SummerSlam or a little later on, I don't know. SummerSlam would SummerSlam is a pretty big event and everything. So that would be a perfect opportunity, but we'll have to see what happens with that. So that was one of mine. And then Joel, you actually said my other my other one was the code red on off the ladder. And then I got a third one as well. <laughs> EO cuffing Bailey and Becky. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> oh, it, 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 Bailey showing up to the presser with EO and holding the briefcase and everything. Uh, 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 Bailey, you didn't win it. EO did. I don't care if you two are part of damage control. It's EOs. <laughs> and the fact that they're rolling with it and giving fat and giving her crap about it and she's playing with it, but. <laughs> Samantha Irwin, when she, when Bailey come out and representing the Judgment Day, and it was just like, <laughs> Mom and I like, wait, what? And then no. the fact they're rolling with it, but then when EO comes out representing Damage Control, like she was, just, <laughs> then she says, I blame, I blame Rhea Ripley, I blame Rhea Ripley for me mistaking that, and then um, Bailey's like, well, what if I'm the real Mammy? And Rhea's like, well, you wish you were the real Mammy. <laughs> <laughs> they're giving her crap about it and i love it yeah i mean everyone's entitled to mistakes people need to leave don't don't yeah don't dog samantha she's still one of the, she's still the best right now oh crap <laughs> but i don't under have you ever noticed i know this is off topic i love when she announces but have you ever noticed how she announces Imperium? like she'll she'll be going Look with Kaiser. And then when it gets to Giovanni, Giovanni Vinci, it's like, okay, why are you so soft spoken for the Ludwig? But yet you yell at the other guy. <laughs> but I do like her own commentary. The fact they moved her to Monday Night Raw is even funnier. And then of course it's like, and then of course when she does Chelsea, like Chelsea Green. Exactly. <laughs> okay, okay. Speaking of Imperium, Ludwig. If Samantha's in the building, stay off the fucking mic. Because it's like, he just drags the shit down and everything like that during the entrance. So, if Samantha's in the building, let her do your intro, okay? Shut the fuck up. Lord have mercy. <sighs> All right. Let's see. Next on the list. Okay. Oh. All right. So... Best entrance. Now, the entrance way for Money in the Bank wasn't, it, it, I mean, it mirrored what was in, it, they had in uh, Puerto Rico for Backlash and everything. So I'm basically going to base this off like sing alongs, crowd reaction, shit like that, and everything. Uh, yeah, this is no brainer, Cody, for sure. <laughs> Cody, for sure. Well, that, that's for me at least. Jolie? I have a tie. It's Cody is one of them, but I love Santos Escobar's entrance with the Aztec and the war paint. There's just something primal about that. And, you know, you know that was just epic with his. Oh, okay. All right. Kayla? Um, well,. Jolie says Santos Escobar too, but we're actually all three Cody Rhodes most definitely. Just that the fact that London was singing Kingdom, right? Kind of, and it kind of, I know it's not, but it kind of gave me, you know, flashbacks of at being at AEW and when Jericho comes out singing along to Judas. I never actually heard someone sing the Kingdom, and then the fact because it's always just been the woe, right? And uh, speaking of the woe, Downstate that does this theme. They did mm-hmm. an interview and they said that when they put the woe in there, they didn't expect the woe to get as loud as it did. And then someone <laughs> and the, someone commented on it and says they didn't do it right in AEW and had to bring it to WWE to do it right. Which is technically true because you didn't really hear the woe over in uh, AEW. Not as, not as loud. Not mm-hmm. as loud. Not even close. It was like there were and more it's like, I gotta give... Jericho. Gotta give true. Work. No, no, yeah, the the sing along for Jericho, yeah, it's like that seemed to always be a hot topic. But it's like, no, I gotta give London a lot of credit. They were singing on to a lot of uh, along to a lot of the things because it's like Cody, you had Cody Nakamura. They did Seth, um, Usos, 
Usos they were doing. Mm-hmm. And you know they had to get Bailey with the Hey Bailey, ooh <laughs> ah, I want to know <laughs> if you'll be our girl. <laughs> I, I, when she freaks out every time, and the funny thing, funny story, because apparently she was at the NF. NFC Championship game that did break out during the Philadelphia 49ers Championship game. Mm. Wow. So I think somebody saw her and there were wrestling fans and then it got started. Oh. <laughs> that, like, that, uh, that was like, oh, wait, wait a minute. Like, wait a minute. I know that song. Why, right. are they, why are they playing that song over the loud? Oh. And then I found out later she was there, and I was like, "Somebody, somebody in the Eagles is a was a wrestling fan and knew about <laughs> this." And even though they're not saying, "Hey Bailey," they 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 told them, "I love my team." Um, but no, no, that, yeah, I that, think she had to like take a red eye or something to get. Yeah, she did. She was exhausted. But that crowd, like it was, it was fantastic. I'm, I mean, I'm, like, I'm not not liking it by saying that Puerto Rico was better. I just felt that because England has gotten so many events, I'm used to them. Look, Car- look at Cardiff, like that was fantastic. Um, anytime they're at the O2 Arena, it's loud. It's fantastic. Yeah, this was this was like with Puerto Rico. That's like the first time ever, I think, or at least a long ass time. Eighteen, nineteen, something like that. 18, yeah. 19 years. So, like, that's 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 why I think Puerto Rico will always be more home. Like, you know, that was that's the what I want to hear at WrestleMania forty. Okay. Oh man! And then, of course, like all the chants that they were doing during the Civil War match, especially towards Roman. <laughs> I'm sorry, but did anybody hear the Shayna sexual chants? Huh? Yeah. They're mad. They had chants during her match, too. I was like, wait, wait, wait. What did they just say? I think somebody wrote that they're saying Shayna sexual. But going back to what you said, like, you know how Jessamine or Jessamine hasn't said anything, but Dakota and Mia have all said something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole mm-hmm. Brie. Yep. So it's like, yeah, yeah, the BTE and it's like, you know, they'll support. The funny thing is like, if they're going to have a civil war and somehow Jessamine comes back, Jessamine's going to be the one that's completely torn because she's with BTE. But she's also with, with, with Rhonda. Yeah. And I mean, if Marina can get out for like one day, I think that would be kind of cool just to have like these little battle lines drawn. I think Jessamine like going, uh, can I ref? Instead, let me let me just kind yeah, of. Yeah, I need a special yeah. guest referee. Marina, <laughs> Marina might be. Can I just be timekeeper for the match? <laughs> and and me is like, dude, no. Let me just fucking hit her. You don't oh fuck with Shayna. Like it's it, it's amazing. Now, okay, so here's the major question: Was it a face turn for Shayna, or was it the ultimate heel turn from Shayna? Because the character that she was dressed up is Horus. From Warhammer 40k. Okay. The character was is kind of like a chaos character. Like if anybody's a, I I literally just read up on this. Somebody that I follow on um YouTube does 40k stuff, so I learn a little bit. But apparently, like Horus was a good guy that got turned into the dark side. So is he fighting back? Like, it, it's it's just it's really weird. And somebody said you should have realized when she was dressed up as Horus she was going to turn on Shayna because that's Horace. You mean Rhonda? No, oh, sorry. Yeah. When Shayna was dressed up, she was going to turn on Rhonda because Horace turned on the quote unquote emperor, the, her quote, his, his quote unquote father and father figure. That's what they were saying is as. Mm. So it was just a real interesting dynamic. So. <sighs> Man, all right, where the hell were we? Make a still good moment. Okay. I uh, think, I, I think all three of us are going to agree on this one. Okay. Jey Uso pinning Roman Reigns. Yeah. It, uh, but I also, I have a little something to go along with that too. 
when he was pinning Jay, when Jay was pinning Roman and everything, you can see um, my my extra feel good moment was Jimmy's face. It's like, oh my god, we did it, we beat him, and it's like, um, and he was letting Jay have this moment and everything, just because it's like Jay put up with so much more crap from Roman than Jimmy did and everything. I, one thing I do wish they did was because uh, we knew they were in the audience they had an interview with them i wish they panned the camera to Sami Zayn, just to see his reaction oh yeah because they were watching the match hmm. and i, I like i liked what somebody said they go i cannot wait for the day after wrestlemania 40 when you have jimmy jay sammy ko celebrating with cody beating Roman for the championship. I was like, motherfucker, if that happens and I am not there, I am going to be pissed. Make sure you're at Wells Fargo. <laughs> I, I'm going to be like talking to my, my one friend that works here. Like, can you just guys just get me in, please? I, I don't have a ticket. Just I will stand here, look pretty. Just let me watch this segment and then I'll leave. <laughs> get you get you, get you VIP for the night or something. <laughs> But Kayla, would you agree with that or? or you know like, yeah. Actually, it is related to that. I just basically put the Usos winning that they, you know, and then I could say Jay had his moment to actually get revenge back on Roman. So most definitely. Okay. But it's just like some of these statistics after last night and everything with the pen, it's like they, they said it. The last time he was actually pinned was December 15th, 2019. At TLC by <laughs> Corbin. But then somebody else, Russell Ops, put this out. September 2013, Jay Uso became the first pin person ever in WWE uh, to pin Roman. And then July 2023, he became the first one to pin him in three and a half years. That's actually kind of cool. That is very fucking cool. It's like complete full circle and everything. Oh, but, and speaking Ke- of Corbin, I want to put this out there real quick. Okay. That match with him and Carmelo, I don't care what anybody says, five fucking stars. That was fantastic. That was an amazing match. Thought- that was, you know, there for a minute, I thought Carmelo was actually going to lose. That's how great. That's the Corbin that we all love and missed. And that was an epic match. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> oh, Bro, when when you true. watch it, like like I, I could not believe what happened, and it was just that ending was sick. And then Braun Breaker lay off the tanner, dude. Yeah, really. No, but it's like I did see on the video that they brought back the lone wolf character for him. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, yeah. it's permanent. Hopefully, it's permanent. Yeah, the super, what is it, the superhuman theme or whatever he had when he first came to, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but Kayla, I was telling Jolie uh, before we recorded and everything that I actually re- um, I actually put the timer on last night from Roman, the start of Roman's music to when it ended, four minutes and 36 seconds. Now he's getting less. I know, I was like, when, I was like, I was telling, I was like, well, that was one of my, that's one of his quickest entrances. Go figure. All right. The coolest look. And I'm going to start this one. Because Jolie, what you said earlier about entrances for him, my coolest look, Santos. Yeah. With the Aztec look, going back to the heritage and everything like that. That was like fucking, that, that was like fucking phenomenal. He brought it out for that. So it's like, that's my coolest look for sure. Kayla? I actually got two for this one. Okay. Um, first one was Santos because I did like that, you know, most definitely very creative. Um, right. And then the fact this person walked down with the hoodie, had the hood over his face to the jacket and had the mask on and takes it off and spin. I kind of like when he does that trying to, and I guess you can say in a way, the way he's bringing the demon, but he's not bringing the demon kind of thing. Right. So. And just a side note, I expect a rematch at SummerSlam. I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, technically, uh, Kayla, you can't get mad at Seth. It wasn't Seth's fault that Finn didn't win. It was Damien's. 
Damien caused him to get distracted because he was about to cash in on, on Finn. He was about to cash in when, when Seth was down and he caused all that distraction. So Damien, Damien's the reason why Finn lost. Technically, we knew Finn weren't going to win anyway, so. Yeah, we were hoping, though. No, all right. Not. Seriously, seriously. My coolest I... look was Becky as Banshee. I, I, she she pulled at my 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 roots of comic love. Nerdy. You know, when they when she, when her or Zelina does the cosplay, I mean, I loved was I always love what Zelina comes out. Her 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 um stuff is just so amazing. Mm-hmm. So, all right, all right, the greatest performer from last night, and I say night because we're recording this on Sunday. All right, the greatest performer, Kayla. Well, honestly, I said EO Sky. I just really loved her little mood set and stuff that she had going on and thing. Um, it's like a part of her wanted to work with Bailey, then a part of her was against Bailey. So, um, and then the fact that Becky, next time you get handcuffs on you, make sure you take them off. So you don't get handcuffed to your formal uh, to your horsewoman horsewoman buddy onto a ladder trying to win a contract, <laughs> and that your horsewoman buddy buddy and their faction outsmarted both of you and climbed up over Bailey to get the briefcase. So yeah, uh, they <laughs> just the you know the mind game she was playing. She was trying to outsmart Bailey the whole time, which was kind of funny. So I said EO Sky. Alrighty. Jester? Paul Heyman. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> oh, that he shitted himself several times. Yeah. <laughs> shitted himself. Looks like he's about to cry. Uh, what do we do now? <laughs> Honestly, I think the performer of the night is Roman. Especially for the outside of the ring, the anger, the disbelief like he I want to see him in a movie opposite Jason Momoa Ooh. like if Ooh. if The Rock is going to be in the next installment of Fast and the Furious well he better bring his tribal cousin in you know br- bring the tribe in bring all of them I don't fucking care I just want to see a stare down between Jason Momoa and and in Joe, a Roman. Okay. I just think that he told, in all honesty, everybody's the performer of the night. I think, you know, you, you can't discredit any of the actors in, or athletes in mm-hmm. the Money in the Bank matches, the Cody Dom match. I mean, technically, the only person that was useless was Rhea. Again, you know, she, I'm so sick and tired of her not at least Oscar put on a match with Charlotte for fuck's sake. At least, you know, and no offense to Natty, but you know, I'm tired of her being put in squash matches. Uh Natty deserves better, in all honesty, than the bullshit that she's going through right now. I'll actually one hundred percent agree with that. Uh put her back with Tamina if Tamina's able to wrestle and have her go against Raquel and live for the titles. Get her, get her something because they're they're just treating somebody who's an absolute legend uh, as somebody to be squashed. At, that's bullshit, in my opinion. But those four men have been putting on a clinic of storytelling for the past three and a half years. Mm-hmm. I mean, with Solo, it's been only a year, but not even a year. Yeah. But still, it's been building and building and building. And just Roman just cemented everything. When he double pinned them and they both kicked out the disbelief. Watching Solo headbutt a table when Jimmy rolled off. He was in dis. He had me believing that he was going absolutely batshit crazy in that ring. Mm-hmm. 
So the performer of the night, 100% is Roman Reigns. Okay. In my opinion. Okay. No, but it's like, yeah, it's like there's a lot of good choices and everything. And I'm just going to go a little sideways here only because of the spots that he gave us during the ladder match and everything. I'm going to go Ricochet because that boy really showed out during the ladder match last night. Can we get, um, as much as it pains me to say this, can we get Ricochet versus Logan Paul? In a ladder some, match? Some, oh, in a ladder match? <laughs> some people are actually saying that that might be a proposal up for SummerSlam already with them two in a match. I don't think it's a ladder match, but them two again, a versus one-on-one. It'd be interesting. I want to see... There, there's so many matches that got... like I was like... You know... I want to see... Uh, Butch versus Shinsuke or... That that match brought so many, like oh my god, these are going to be some fantastic matches down the line. Mm-hmm. And I will say this: hearing that crowd sing Shinsuke's theme brought me back to when he first debuted. Oh, yeah, that was fantastic. Ugh. But it's like, yeah, it's like this could open. The, I mean, lot. With Money in the Bank, it opened like so many doors, possibilities for um, SummerSlam matches. It's unreal. <sighs> Man. All right. Uh, Jolie, one out of 10. What do you rate it? 10. There was nothing that disappointed me. I mean, my faves didn't win the contract. Okay, that's fine. Technically, I was secretly rooting for Damien to begin with because he was my second choice. Just because I've seen fractures within Judgment Day, because and I just want a little bit more drama and uh, for that group, if they're gonna pull anybody, it should be him and leaving uh, to bring in JD Madonna. So, okay. and then somebody said, well, maybe it's SummerSlam be Finn, Dom versus Priest and Bad Bunny. Oh my God! It's like. Just the look on Damien's face when someone asked him about Bad Bunny in the po- in the po- in the presser and everything. He's just like, "We're really going to talk about this? We're really?" <laughs> oh my god! I heard one fucking rumor, and God, let this be a rumor. Someone actually said that uh, the proposed uh, title match for SummerSlam is Seth versus Dom. I mean, it'll be fun watching him get humiliated because you know Becky's going to come out to protect her man. Brandy, I love you, but, you know, you can't send Pharaoh after a bitch like that. You don't want to get him rabies. (laughs) Oh, man. All right, Kayla, one out of ten. You're muted. (laughs) Ten. Yeah, no, it's like, it, it, it's a 10. I mean, you really can't, there really wasn't a bad match of the night. And an extra bonus for me was both of my money in the bank predictions were correct. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, she finally got something right. Ah, I know, that was a shocker. Ah, I got them both right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But money in the bank was one for the books. All right, so before we get into cooking these fools on Twitter, uh, Kayla, we don't really hit on this promotion too much and everything, but I know you wanted to bring up a little impact. Um, yes, because um, the Rascals, well, two out of four are back together, specifically on a big brand. Um. It was actually honestly great to see um, Zach return and help Trey out and that they hugged it out and the thing. And the promo that he did backstage after the fact saying he was back was even more epic. Um, congratulations, Zach, for coming back to Impact. Um, I know it's going to definitely be great for you guys. So, um Continue to make history there, like you did on the indies. Um, I hate that you had to relinquish some of your indie titles, but hey, 
you're back at impact it's only going to make history even more um so and part of me is still wishing maybe one day because i've seen it in the back that um way in the back like rumored that it's been a while that wwe has actually wanted trey miguel so um who knows we might get zach and trey in wwe later down the line once you know a few things crossed out so um a big fan of the rascals can only help. So, but no, congrats, Zach. I'm proud that you're back in Impact. And um, I know this would have never happened if a certain psycho bitch was still there. So, um, but no. Anyway, congrats. You and Trey go make history. Go get those tag titles. Do what you need to do. And keep striving because you definitely done it and proved that you're a good professional wrestler. Uh yeah, I saw that and I was like, going, all right, he's got a home again for a little bit, so it's like good for him. And plus he's back with his friend. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Oh, getting back to WWE for a hot second and uh for a hot second and everything. At the post game presser, they actually brought up I, I didn't even know this invitation was out there, but apparently it is. Um yeah, they put I guess they officially put out an invitation to Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion for the tag title match at SummerSlam. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? They would have to like start training like now for that. <laughs> Jeez Louise. I wonder if they'll actually end, end up making an appearance, but we'll see. All right. Kayla, do you have any tweets? I don't think I did. Hang on, let me check. Oh, I thought you said you had to cook somebody. I mean, was it just me? I don't remember who the heck it was. Oh, yeah, I remember this tweet. Okay. At Big Time EST. Okay. Chelsea Green is by far one of the greatest, best rehires of Triple H's. Not Bray Wyatt, not Johnny Gargano, not Karrion Cross, not Bronson Reed, not Braun Strowman, not Meech and Mia Yim. She's really a star. <laughs> for comedic effect only that's it I was like wow oh my god idiot city Ugh. someone says Johnny's record he was not released though but his contract expired and he didn't want to return he, t- he took a break and he, it's not like he didn't want to return he took a break Oh, here's the one I said I wanted to roast somebody. Oh, yeah. I, I was another one I had. Jobber Knocker Wrestling Podcast. Oh, God, these assholes again. Don't believe a word of Jungle Boy's promo. Tony Khan, you're missing an opportunity here. Jungle Boy is not good at promos and needs help. Get Jungle Boy to take out Sammy and join the JS, JAS. Anna J is already there, and it'll help him immensely. First of all, he does not need to join the JS, JAS, J, what, the jackasses. <laughs> um, so leave Jungle Boy alone, for real. I mean, he's finally, this is the first time he's actually been a heel. So, and the fact that he looked... On Dynamite, he looked literally like a Luke Perry Jr. in that ring mm-hmm. with those shades, the hair, the jacket, and everything. Um, right. Give him time. He's been great on promos. He knows what to do. He knows what he wants. So shut up, dude, and just give just give him time. I don't care if you all block me on Twitter or whatever for this, but here lately, you've been saying some really dumb stuff. And these jobber alerts things, some of the people you're calling jobbers are nowhere near jobbers. Like, jeez. Yeah, I remember, like, it was like last show or the show before. It's like uh, Jolie had to cook those guys for something. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, boy. Jolie, did you have any by any chance? No, but, um, hey, jobbers, jobbers, come here. Come here. Come here, lean in closely, a little bit closer. Too close. All right. God damn, take a shower, boys. You smell like you've been living in your mama's basement for ten years. Um, Jungle Boy's fine. 
I watched the promo. You want to know why I watched that promo? Because I have a deep connection with the kid because of his father. And I want to see how he's doing. And you know what? He did pretty damn good. And why would you want to subject him to working with a scumbag like Chris Jericho? Sorry. If you're going to have him work with anybody, have him work with, oh, I don't know, the Bucks or Omega or Hangman or, I don't know, Daniel fucking Bryan. Yeah. He's not going to be doing anything for the next six months because apparently that breaks really bad and they're going to have to fuse it because mm-hmm. he's a fucking idiot. So here's the thing. Y'all really need to just take a step back and shut the fuck up. Because some of the shit y'all spill, I get it. You're jealous. Is that why you put the jobbers report out? Oh, Is that because they're better than you? They're better than you. Aw, poor babies. Aw. Do they get more pussy than you? I mean, God knows Carrie and Cross does. I know you have to call your hand Scarlet, but he at least gets the fucker. Like, geez. You guys don't... Don't know anything. So again, take a seat and shut the fuck up. Because guess what? You don't want to fuck with me. You don't. You really fucking don't. Because... To quote JR, I don't mind taking your ass to the woodshed and beating you like a government mule. Oh, Lord have mercy. Hey, Jobbers, by the way, that invitation is still open if you want to come on and dispute. Yeah, I'm sorry. They probably lost their dicks somewhere. They might have to check their mom's purses. <laughs> so the, the sign that goes like this, it's like a sideways V would be what? Sideways V? Oh, like uh, better than or... Uh... Greater than or uh, worse less than. than. Yeah, greater than and less than. Okay. This Tiffany Love 24. I just found this one while Jolie was talking. Okay. What is greater or less than between these two women's money in the bank? Okay. Okay. I'm going to name the... All right. From last night, we had Eo Sky, Trish Stratus, Zoe Stark, Bailey, Zelina, and Becky. Okay. And they're saying which one is greater or less than the other one. Here's the other one. Sasha Banks, Natalia, Charlotte Flair, Ember Moon or Athena, Alexa Bliss, Becky, Naomi, and Lana. I'm going to stick with the last night's Money in the Bank people. Y'all got fucking Lana on there. Go fuck yourself. Okay, let's take Lana out. There we go. (laughs) Oh, that one was so much for the... That one had so much potential. They both, the, I the mean, second one has, yeah. Because I mean, there's a besides Lana, I mean, the talent in that was just phenomenal. That was the night Alexa Bliss won, which, we yeah. Won. But other than that, I mean, yeah. I still have I mean, to give it to, to last night's. Don't get me wrong, it was a great one, but there were more spot monkeys and spot monkey spots in this one, yeah. And when it comes to ladder matches, that's what I want to see. Like, when you when you know it's going to be a match that involves weaponry or no holds barred or anything like that, I like the spots. I like the anticipation. And with the women that were in the one of the original ones, they were okay, but it wasn't as exciting as last night's. Developed. It's it's kind of developed more yes. over the years and everything. Exactly. Oh, can we can we give a major props to to Butch for bringing in that cricket paddle <laughs> during the match? That, that was actually fun. That was actually funny for a second. Oh, all right. Here's the one I've been wanting to cook for days. All right, at Two Heads Podcast, they tweeted out a picture of Carmelo Hayes with the NXT Championship. 
And they said, look, man, this guy has a very bright future in WWE. There's no doubt about it. But you simply can't be him at 5'8". What the fuck does height have to do with anything? Rey Mysterio just went into the Hall of Fame, 5'6". Eddie Guerrero, one of the biggest names of all time, also a Hall of Famer, 5'8". Height has nothing to do with it. It's your persona. It's your appearance. It's your performance. It's the way you present yourself. Hell, Hornswoggle was like under like for something. And uh, I mean, it was, his was mainly comedic effect and everything. But no, height has absolutely nothing to do with it. And I take offensive to that because I'm five. I'm a five two woman. And hell, it's like some uh, some of the, the some of the women are not that uh, tall and everything. Alexa Bliss. Um, I'll bring her up and everything. She's like one of the greatest women um, in our modern era today. And yeah, no, sit the fuck. Ah, God, wait, what are you six two and can't do shit? Jesus Christ! He's probably five nine. <laughs> but buddy, it's like, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Carmelo is him. And this is coming from somebody who has him as his quarterback. That's Jalen fucking Hurts. So I know all about what it's like to have somebody him. Carmelo is humble backstage. He's a fast learner. He's a fast talker. He went toe-to-toe with one of the greatest wrestlers in the business, Finn Balor, and almost beat him. That was a great match. He is him. And again, like those other bros that I just talked to I get it you want to be him you'll never be him so why don't you just take a seat and enjoy the show Kayla anything to add someone tweeted I I thought I saw this but it didn't really click on my head okay it said the crowd was chanting stand up if you hate Roman when Roman sat down by the on the side right there the apron he's there says Roman sat his ass down (laughs) <laughs> and then of course it's like later in the match it's like sit down if you hate Roman if you, if, you, if you hate Roman sit down and everything and then that's what everybody was sitting down it's like like I told you during that match the crowd was like chanting like crazy it was like fucking unbelievable oh wow I'm trying to see if there's Man. anybody else we can roast well before we go alright <laughs> someone tweeted out Jake Cargill we miss you are you coming back soon she tweeted about no <laughs> that was quick and I gotta give props to Stat and everything since she won that TBS title she has been on a roll defending it like crazy and it's just like props to her she deserves it that match uh, last night on collision against um, Lady Frost she gave a run for her freaking money cool so I mean I've seen her in the ring before so just don't underestimate Jamie. All right. Well, while Kayla's looking for someone to roast real quick, Joel, you got any final thoughts? About wrestling? No. I'm actually content. Okay. Nobody? Nobody. No one. Other than Lo- other than someone said Logan Paul was the better wrestler in Bad Bunny. Changed my mind. Oh, hell no. That's what I just happened to see. It was like the second time I've seen it. Oh God, I am so fucking sick of Logan Paul already. Ugh. Oh, Jesus. Oh Christ. yeah, holy shit! Ricochet with a Spanish fly to Logan Paul through the two tables at ringside was scary as crap. Yeah, that was the way they both landed. Yeah, it's like he didn't get like the full effect. Logan of, never. It didn't seem like Logan never got back up. Oh, speaking of Logan, the part where someone put a picture of Bailey joining Judgment Day. <laughs> uh. But no, the fact that it was like, you see the, you all see the prime bottle go flying into the floor. Towards yeah, Chaos. Yeah, Chaos. I was in the crowd. Yeah. Yeah, apparently he was at ringside and everything. I hear he <laughs> Oh, man. All right. So, Kayla, any final thoughts? <laughs> no more times I was meant to announce representing the Judgment Day this week, 19. Number of times I announced it, 20. Number of times I was meant to announce representing damage control this week, Two. Number of times I announced it, once. (laughs) 
Stealth from Samantha. <laughs> I like oh. she's having I like she's having fun with the blunder. Yeah, but hey, it's like you said, she does pretty good. She we all make mistakes, but other than last few thoughts, oh well, we're after money in the bank. I mean, what's the next step? Heading towards SummerSlam. So anything can happen between now and then and returns, right. real, you know, new champions. I don't know. Um, and the wonderful thing that people I've seen on Twitter, people have been bitching that LA Knight didn't win. And Triple H basically says there's going to be greater things coming for him later in the past. Great things come for people that wait. He referred to LA Knight. He referred to Cody Rhodes. He referred to Karrion Cross. But, you know, it's just like Cross always says in due time. Dude, I hate when you say that in due time. What does your due time mean? But, right. you know, nine but, months. <laughs> I don't know. But hey, I'm just, I just know the three people like Knight and Cross and whoever is kind of like shuffled, you know, I guess I'll say just trust the process. Might be frustrating, but it's all you can do. Trust it. Yeah. I mean, I'm interesting to see what will happen on Friday with Cross and AJ again, because I swear to God, it's like when Mia came on the screen the other day, she looked like she was like a, bull- a bulldog ready to bark and bite. AJ, poodle on a leash. Really? (laughs) If they would let Scarlet release the way she should in wrestling, she would be a Rottweiler, not a poodle. Eh, Maybe Chihuahua. No. (laughs) (laughs) Well, she could be a vicious Chihuahua if he let her, but still. But a poodle on a leash. (laughs) Mom Mom was in the other room and he came back. She's like, Oh, AJ's promo, and he says, "She just did. He just say call her." I said, "Yeah, he called her a poodle on a leash." <laughs> oh my god! Uh, oh, well, you and, look like you're ready to say something else. Oh no! And Scarlet, if Meechin comes after you again, don't run away like a little bitch, like you did the last time. I mean, I couldn't blame you because you were in heels and a dress, but don't do it this time. At least. Go somewhat prepared to the ring if you go across. Thank you. So you can run away or take a shot. Or heck, if you want to wear heels and kick her in the head with the heels, that's up to you. But hey! I am just saying, don't run away like you did last time. <laughs> take up for your man. Take up for yourself. Because I know right. you can. Oh my God. Oh, shit. Jolly, you look like you're ready to say something else. Uh, Yeah, actually, I do. The whole L.A. Knight should have won thing. And it's something that, like, you know, people have been, you know, saying that, oh, they robbed him, they robbed him, they robbed him, just like they did Cody. Yada, yada, yada. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Here's the thing. And I said this before. Damian winning adds more drama to Monday Night Raw. L.A. doesn't need it. L.A. has everything that he already needs. Um, it was similar to me saying that why I didn't think EO needed to win the title because she already has everything that she needs to to move forward to go against Asuka because technically she should be next in line to face her regardless of having the briefcase or not. And for me, I would rather have, have like a trilogy of matches between them other than like, you know, just, oh, I'm going to sneak cash in. I don't, I don't think that's good for certain storylines, especially when it comes to matches with EO and Asuka. But with L.A., the crowd is behind him. The crowd is is for him. And it's like right now, him winning didn't make sense. And I mean it this way. He's on SmackDown. He is not, in my opinion, ready to be the face of SmackDown like Roman is. And if he's going to dethrone anybody for a title at the moment, I'm sorry. It needs to be, he needs to go for Austin Theory's title, the United States championship. He's not ready for having this, the main title. He's not there. I'm sorry. Love the dude. I like his shirt, but it's, it's not, not right now. Maybe 
next year after WrestleMania. Let mm-hmm. let the stories that are what people are not caring about. There's stories that are being played out right now that are long. This bloodline is a long term thing, and it's it wasn't the right time to pull the trigger on LA for that. Because now you're gonna have now see if all right if I was fantasy booking, I would have LA come say like you know I didn't get it, and then have Austin Theory interrupt him. Well, I did. I won, yada, yada, yada. And then just LA just fucking smacked the living piss out of them. So, like, you know, there's so much more to do it. And just like with EO, I think, like, you know, there's... And I do agree that maybe they don't see Zelina as a top competitor. But she has... He knows something's coming for her. And she knows something's coming for her. And it's going to be something special. And when it does Mm -hmm. happen, it's going to be amazing. And maybe, like I predicted, then I've said, I'm going to say this right now. It is July 2nd, 2023 at 4.33 p.m. I am saying that Zelina Vega is going to win win the Women's Royal Rumble. That is my pick. Kayla, write it down. Keep the prediction. Keep that prediction ready. Because that is my pick. What's the time? 4.34 now. I just think that there, there's people that need the briefcase and Damien and this is no knock to any of those other men in that match. But dude, Damien has been a fucking workhorse for the past few years. Don't get me wrong. I love Ricochet. I love all of them. But, you know, Damien has just honestly put everything out there. And the man has earned it. I mean, he put on probably one of the best matches with Bad Bunny. Mm -hmm. So, the people bitching, moaning, complaining, y'all got to remember one thing. The Bloodline story took years. Give it a little bit of time. Triple H knows what he's doing. He's not a fantasy booker like Tony. He's not. He doesn't give people what they want right now. He plays the long game. That makes a great story, Jolly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jolly, were these the shirts you were talking about for LA yeah. night? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I just saw these, yeah. Those are pretty damn cool. No, but I could not I could not disagree. I mean, I could not agree with you more about LA Knight being the one that the throne theory. It's like that would be absolutely perfect. When they'll pull the trigger, who fucking knows? All I know is I'm so sick of feeling as a champion because he's a major pain in the ass. He's a bitch. Smells like bitch. Oh, Lord have mercy. All oh, these next few weeks are going to be fun building up to SummerSlam. Uh, and of course, of course, one thing we haven't mentioned in everything, when uh, Roman was trying to get a pin on Jay and everything, and Jay kicked out in the same low ball way that Roman did once before and everything. That was like a full circle moment as well. I loved how Michael Cole said, oh, I didn't see that the first time. And I'm like, bitch, I saw it. <laughs> bitch, you were staring at it. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, all right. Anybody else? Any other final thoughts? I know we've been talking since I asked. We good? We good? Yep. All right. All right. Well, that's all we have for this episode of the Queen's Takeover. Thank you so much for joining us. And tune in next time as the takeover continues. Y'all have a good one. <laughs>